did this in uh, two days. So. So what kind of uh, other caveats have you experienced in Cordova? I mean, like obviously you lose out a little bit by having something that's you know not Android specific, or not iOS specific. You know. Uh, that is a question for Dan because my my secret is that I've never actually made a Cordova app. This is my first time. So <laughs> that's his first Cordova. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess like you know, obviously uh, I saw some of your ones are a little bit small, right? So is sizing usually an issue? Uh, no. Well, I generally use Ionic, so. One thing that you're going to want is a CSS framework. And there's, there's a whole whack to choose from. So I had shown that junior.js. It's basically like, you know, build your buttons. Ionic has a CSS framework built into it, which is pretty nice. Um, there's like Ratchet.js, which is basically Bootstrap, but for mobile. It's actually okay. made by Bootstrap. Uh, and then there's like a, a plethora of uh, CSS frameworks that you can, uh, can look at. So styling generally isn't an issue. If you're like really into it, you can look at like Sencha. Uh, so Sencha is like even more specific. It'll actually like change your whole style based on the device. Um, just the only thing I've really run into is like it still treats it like a like a web app. So like it is nice for the rapid development, but like you can listen on a Chrome inspector and like so say you're like saving like API keys and you're transferring them to JavaScript. That's the client side. So the issue is that like you still have client side JavaScript running on the phone, so things could be cool. So I mean, you got to be really mindful of that kind of stuff. Um, I've never really run into any issues with like you know something I couldn't really do easily. Facebook was difficult to integrate with. Uh, Facebook doesn't support its Cordova plugin very nicely, um, just like it doesn't support anything it's ever done very nicely, except for React. <laughs> um, it was like the graph API was going up a version, but they didn't upgrade the Cordova plugin to use the correct one, but you can't use the JavaScript plugin because you're not a website. So you have to use the Cordova plugin, which utilizes the Android SDKs. And there was this weird disconnect where they weren't updating their thing, so I was kind of like shafted. So that would be my only example of really wishing it wasn't in a uh, hybrid app. I've actually found it easier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like, what do you, how do you find the, well, I guess it's just the jobs. I guess, yeah, it's just the HTML app. I, I can't remember how well HTML actually runs on a uh, phone when you use, you know, when you're trying like, to make, you know, certain Android things. Yeah, you know, there's like, some apps that you can probably or, use that you would have no idea that it's a hybrid app. For example, Wonderlist. If you ever use Wonderlist, the to-do app, it's actually a, a hybrid application on both the desktop app and the phone app. The desktop app's using uh, Tide SDK, and they're using uh, Cordova for the, the phone app. And the you can, as long as you're like mindful of what you're doing, of course, memory management, like you don't want to like throw everything you've ever done into JavaScript and just like you know overload the phone. You're gonna run into that same issue on like shitty computers. Um, as long as you're mindful of like. JavaScript and minifying your files and stuff like that, you won't run into any issues. Um, and the answer happens so well. One thing I found when I was looking at Cordova versus Native um, is garbage collecting. So yeah. you'll invoke, say, the camera, for example. So you have a JavaScript app that goes to the idle of that, but you invoke the camera process, and the phone will actually kill your background, your JavaScript in the background. So it's not what you do. So you can close your camera, but Cordova doesn't have that handle it. Whereas Native, you can talk to the threads between the two. Yeah, one of the hardest things with, uh, with JavaScript apps is uh, there's no proper background mode. Um, so you're kind of stuck in this like single threaded environment unless you're doing things like file transfer and like whatever. But if you try to like just have your phone running in the background while you're doing something else, um, there is a plugin, it's a third party plugin not made by Cordova that uh, will make your app run in the background, but it has to keep a notification in your notification drawer and if you try to use that, and I went through this, if you try to use that to publish into the Apple App Store, they will reject you. Oh. You're not allowed to run in the background on iOS, mm. which is weird, because I didn't know that. I don't have an iPhone. Um, and it's not super nice uh, for the Android one either, because like, do you really want a notification in your notification drawer 100% of the time? So you kind of have. That you, can, you can still catch like I guess like the uh, the on pause. Yeah, you still have access to all that kind of stuff. It's just yeah, running in the background. Like say you want your app to constantly be running. Yeah. Like you know, yeah, Facebook's always running. Yeah. Yeah. You'll run into some problems. Oh, okay. For 
with your example of the camera, you say like you would go to the camera, put your picture in app, but they would download your app and then the camera would just send it kind of nowhere. Yeah, but so the example I can give is I would go try to create an app on the camera or just accessing my computer whatever. And I put my phone down, have a conversation, few minutes passes, the car is talking to someone this is a dead thread. Because it's these cameras one that you have to do it's not. Close my uh, background when I close the camera. 